Good, good morning, Chairwoman Adams, Ranking Member Byrne, and members of the subcommittee. My name is Matt Townsend. I'm the CEO of OCP Contractors, a construction company that employs 500 men and women working across the state of Ohio and a neighboring state. I'm privileged to appear before you today in my capacity as president of the Signatory Wall and Ceiling Contractors Alliance. SWACA is an association representing construction company owners who employ tens of thousands of carpenters, drywall finishers, plasters, and laborers throughout the United States. We thank you for holding this hearing and allowing me to explain that the threat of worker misclassification poses to the ability of law-abiding employers in my industry to compete, to innovate, and to create jobs. Our members are entrepreneurs who do not want to be complicit in the misclassification racket in order to compete. But rampant misclassification in the construction industry is making it hard for law-abiding employers to compete and to provide fair pay and economic security for our employees. In my industry, misclassification is a choice to disregard the legal responsibilities of being an employer. It provides a competitive advantage by transferring to workers and taxpayers financial obligations and the risks associated with honest, that honest business owners accept. SWACA members pursue their work through a cost competitive bidding process in which 60 to 80 percent is the cost of labor. This includes the number of workers, how much time they'll need to finish the project, and to what degree they'll have to work overtime to finish on schedule. If our estimates about labor costs are wrong, our profits quickly evaporate. But workers get paid for every hour of work, and they get overtime when their work exceeds 40 hours in a week. People using the misclassification model can always submit a lower bid because they don't have to worry about how many hours it takes the workers to complete the project or whether they work overtime to get the job done on schedule. For them, labor is a fixed cost. They pay a predetermined amount for each piece of drywall finished or square foot of framing or ceiling installed and not one penny more, no matter how many hours it takes. Make no mistake, in the misclassification schemes I see, contractors control and direct their workers to the job site just like my company does. These are regularly, regular crews, economically dependent on a boss who takes them from job site to job site. By disassociating themselves from the legal responsibilities and costs of being employers, these so-called contractors get a tremendous competitive advantage. The Ohio Attorney General estimated that misclassifying workers provides at least a 20 to 30 percent competitive cost advantage against law-abiding law employers. When competing against a company like mine that pays middle-class wages, sponsors training programs, and offers retirement and health benefits, the advantage is more than 50 percent. The people running these rackets know that a shrinking number of investigators face considerable barriers bringing them to justice. Investigations require evidence from vulnerable workers afraid of being blacklisted from future jobs and anxious about being on the government's radar screen. When workers do come forward, holding bad actors financially accountable is complicated by layers of shell companies upon which misclassification schemes are typically built. The rampant misclassification of workers in my industry isn't just bad for honest employers, it also hurts workers and their families. For example, a contractor employed a crew of over 1,000 misclassified workers on more than two dozen hotel and apartment projects. The workers toiled over 50 hours a week without breaks or overtime. They were not paid in regular intervals, and when the contractor finally issued checks, they bounced. Misclassification in the construction industry also victimizes taxpayers to the tune of $2.6 billion a year. This is because these schemes don't withhold payroll taxes, Social Security, or FICA contributions. They don't pay unemployment insurance or workers' compensation premiums. Instead, they throw the cost of unemployed and injured workers on taxpayer-funded programs while fueling tax fraud, labor trafficking, and other serious crimes. I know every member here today supports law-abiding entrepreneurs responsibly pursuing productive and profitable activities benefiting our companies, our customers, our workers, and our communities. But in the construction industry, pervasive misclassification is rapidly undermining the viability of the traditional model of American free enterprise. So on behalf of law-abiding construction employers, I thank you for holding this hearing. I hope that it will result in concrete proposals to address the rampant misclassification plaguing my industry. I welcome any questions you may have. 